Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Temi Chokwe Fagbimi. We begin today's program with a CAF presidential election, which saw Madagascar's Football Association chief, Ahmad Ahmad, being elected president of the Confederation of African Football, CAF. This brings an end to Isa Ayatu's 29 year reign. Ahmad received 34 votes compared to Ayatu's 20 at the 39th CAF General Assembly in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The result means a change in leadership for the first time since Hayatu took charge in 1988. Ahmad becomes only the seventh CAF president in the governing body's 60-year history. He will serve from 2017 to 2021. In the meantime, Nigeria Football Federation President Ahmad Penik has been elected into the CAF Executive Committee. Ahmad polled a total of 32 votes ahead of his rival from Benin Republic, and Jorin Mucharofu, who got 17. This is the first time Nigeria will be having a representative in the executive board since the exit of Amos Adamu. So let's get more from this story. Our sports correspondent Cecilia Omoro is back with us on the program to further discuss the issue. Thanks for coming on in Talk Africa. Thank you, Talk Africa, for having me. So what do you make of today's election? Was it what you expected? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to say yes, because I expected that. I was thinking, or rather I was hoping that a man would win. But then if you check policies in Africa, you never can tell because some people at the diamonds were like, okay, Hayato Yukubensa might just come to play. But then when we saw uh, a kind of, uh, should I use the word rumor coming out from Addis Ababa, the fact that, okay, there was some underground job that <laughs> a man was also doing promising uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia that they can actually co-host the 2025 you know, Africa Cup of Nations. And also that same day, when uh, Hayatu was promising Zambia that they can actually a bit for it. Well, I think both of them were trying to just run an underground politics and all. But at the end of the day, actually favored Ahmad because I think Africans were actually tired of having one man at the hands of affairs for a very, very long time. So when the opportunity came, someone who felt, okay, I can actually, you know, contend with this man. I've got the support from the Kosafa, where he's actually from. He got about, we had 13, we knew at that time that maybe 13 FA presidents will be voting for him, but no one knew how many will be. So at the end of the day, well, this morning, he's the winner. So what are we expecting from the incoming CAF president? A lot of changes, because uh, he's been saying that he's tired with the obsolete nature in which uh, CAF is being born. So he's going to bring a whole lot of changes, talking about transparency, number one, and the fact that he will try as much as possible to separate politics from CAF. We understand most times when elections are coming and all of that, you have the CAF president actually trying to get the government of different countries involved in order. Nigeria is a case study where Amanjo uh, Pinnick has already said, okay, he wants to vote for a man. And of course, we have stories from presidency that the presidency is saying, you can actually back Hayatu because of the political ties and all of that. So these are some of the things he would actually want to change, to just allow football to be the main focus of CAF and not mm -hmm. politics at all. Now, Infantino was at the Congress. Do you think his presence influenced the voting process? Not really, because normally as a FIFA president, you're expected to attend most of the Congress across the world. So it's not just only in Africa that's coming in. When Asia was also having theirs, he was there. Uh, um, CONCACAF also, and even the North America. So he, he goes around. But, but then, we've seen the hand, handwriting on the wall. We, the body language and everything. The fact that the main campaign manager of a man talking about Philip, uh, that's the every president of Zimbabwe, when he had his birthday, you know, Gianni Fantino was there. So it tells you a whole lot that there's something actually in between them. But I felt just maybe uh, Gianni Fantino would have wanted a change just like we had in CAF. Because I think the world at large is actually tired of the same set of people, you know, being in charge of football in the world. They wanted younger people. And Ahmad, he's 57, although he has been the president of Madagascar for like since 1993, it was like, 17 years for a very long time and all that. But then the fact that he hasn't been, you know, a CAF president, that's what they're also looking at. And they have a tenure now. So it's going to be four, term, uh, four years of three terms. So the maximum is going to spend there is 12 years. Okay. So did Nigeria support her Madamad's candidacy? Definitely. We are the directors out there. Uh, Amanjo Pinnick, he said it everywhere, international media and all that, that this is the man he wants. He wants the change and he wants someone to actually bring in something different. They were not really against uh, Isaiah for any reason, but they felt they just need someone new to bring in changes and some fresh ideas, you know, into CAF. Now, with Amanjo Pinnick's victory, what's at stake for Nigeria? 
Uh, um, it's a good one because everyone has been saying that uh, with Nigeria not having a representative in CAF, it's actually affecting the football. There are some decisions that will be made, but because you don't have a representative there, you don't really have any say. So whatever comes, you're going to take it. But right now you have someone there. So whatever key decisions that will be made in CAF concerning Nigeria or football, definitely you have someone who can actually uh, speak for the country. And the good thing about this uh, Amanju's case is the fact that even when he doesn't get to win a re-election to still be uh, next year when he, they will start their own Nigerian Football Federation election. He's, I mean, he's got a four-year term, so he can still continue as a member of CAF Executive Committee. So I would say uh, he, he knew what he wanted. So he went for Ahmad. Ahmad won, and also he wanted a position at the Executive Committee. He also got it. So it's more like he's having everything. He's on way. <laughs> oh, Cecilia, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you.